In this video, I'm going to show you how to use ticks to annotate a plot. First, we'll start with the plot I want to annotate. And this plot was given to me by one of my graduate students. It's a very nice plot. Let's tell you what's good about this plot. So I have two sets of data. They're plotted in red and green. It's good that each axis, y-axis and x, both have meaningful titles and units. These are important to help us interpret the graph. There's also a label so that you can tell which data set is which. So this is a very good and fine plot. However, we're going to make it better through annotations. One way I used to annotate things was to use the Inkscape program. And this is a great program. I used it for many years. Uh, you can insert graphics uh, and then you can you know, put in text boxes uh, and annotate things, and that's fine. But eventually, I wanted to move on to something else because I find that with a text-based system, I actually have more control over the graphics. And if I find a setup that I like for the graphics, it's very easy to copy and paste, and then maybe just change a pointer to a different file, and I bring in new data. So I'll give you a link to Inkscape in the video description, but we're not going to use Inkscape. We're really going to focus on ticks. So what is ticks, you might ask? Great question. Let's look at it. So if I do a search for ticks graphics and then click images, you can start to see the wonderful images that people create using ticks. They may be 2D or 3D. Here's a nice 3D image. These are extremely nice. You know, they're uh, color, 3D, graphics, and it actually takes some doing to make these images. Tix is fairly complex, but once you learn it, it really makes effective graphics and illustrations. So, let's get started. So Tix is part of LaTeX, and in order to use it, you must have a LaTeX system. So, we'll go over and get one of my LaTeX editors. Here's a LaTeX editor. And if you've used LaTeX before, you know you have to have a document class. That's part of every file. And typically you use article or some other document class. And then you have to have a begin document and an end document. And all your data and all your commands for your document go in this area between the begin and the end. Here I'm going to use a different document class, which is standalone. Other document classes give you something with a page definition and, and it has typical sheets you know, to it, pages, it produces a PDF. Here this is going to produce just a figure. So first thing I need to do is add the ticks package. So use package like this. Next I need to have a ticks picture environment. So you type begin, and this defines a ticks picture. Next, we'll add a node. This will import an image. So to do this, I use the node command. I can specify a name for it. Then I have to specify where the image is at. So I'll put here 0, 0. So those are Cartesian coordinates. And then every node has to have braces and in the braces you put in some text. So for now I'll just put in some text and then we'll show you what happens. This follows an important principle uh, when you're writing programs is run early, run often. The other thing I have to do, I forgot to tell you, is every command in ticks requires a semicolon. So here, this is a node command and there's a semicolon. So I'm going to compile this. Uh, oh, I have to save it first. And what I'm doing is saving it in the same folder as the images that I'm working with. So we'll put it here. And it saved it, and I used uh, the command T on my Mac to compile it. And then it produced this image on a different screen. So I'll bring it over. There it is. All it says is text, because that's all I told it to. So here's a node. I write text at some position. Now let's change the text to a graphic. So here I use the latex command include graphics. 
and then I point to the graphic that I want. And so if I go back to my finder, uh, these were the graphics I had in this folder. They end in JPEG or JPG. And then uh, here's the demo LaTeX file that I saved. And then when I compiled it, LaTeX created these other files. And then notably, here's the PDF that it generated. OK, now we'll point to this file. This is the graph that I talked about earlier. And so the include graphics has braces, and in the braces you put the file name. So if I save this and then compile it, my graphic now looks like this. It just includes the plot. Now I want to add another graphic on here for an annotation. So I can just copy and paste my node. Now I will change the position of the node. Let's make it say 1, 1. And we'll get the name of another picture to put in here. So I'm getting another picture. Paste it in the place of the other picture name. And if I save and then compile, I have this. Now this isn't exactly what I want because the new picture is too big and it covers the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify a new size. And to do that, I can put in options for include graphics. So right before the brace, uh, the left brace that is, I can put in here something like height equals one inch. I don't know what that is for now, but let's see what happens. This is actually a lot of guess and check. But once you guess and check and you get good results, well, then it's easy to copy and paste. So that's one inch. It might be a bit big. So I'm going to shrink it a little bit more. Half an inch. Try it again. That's a little bit better. I'll make it three quarters and we'll maybe say that's good for now. But I want to reposition it. I'll push it up and to the right a little bit. And so uh, let's make it 2-2. Two, two. See how that goes? OK. Uh, maybe even a little bit more. We'll call it 2-3. Uh, so I'm moving it straight up. OK. Uh, that's decent, I suppose. Maybe a little bit more in both directions. All right, we'll keep it there. Uh, by the way, I'm going to change the name from main image to something like uh, image A, OK? And we'll try to use that name later. Then I'm going to add another image. So copy, paste, and we'll call it image B. And then I'm going to get the other name. If you pay attention here, I've got a spin uh, density for state 0 and another one for state 1. Uh, you don't have to know what these mean. You just have to know how to uh, annotate a plot, which is the goal here. So I've done this. And by the way, there's a state 0 and a state 1 here. And uh, I think I'm actually going to switch it around. I'm going to put state 1 here, state 0 here. You don't have to uh, understand that. That's OK. And for image B, I put state 0 right on top of state 1, so I have to move it. And so I'm going to put here, say, negative uh, 2.5 and uh, 3.5. Let's see how that goes. And so now this is kind of nice because I separated the two images. And uh, what I'm, I've got this legend in the back, which is, uh, it's all right. But I'm going to push it over to the left some more so that it it gets covered up by the state uh, zero picture. So we'll make this a negative 3.5. Compile. OK, that's better. And then I'm going to push it some more. And then up a little bit. OK, and that's maybe uh, a little high. I don't know. Got to push it a little bit more left. That's good. And then maybe I can trim a little bit off the top so that it doesn't destroy my top line. So I can use the uh, options here. I add a 
trim and then I'll put zero for the left side, zero for the bottom, zero for the right side, and then let's try one centimeter for the top. And then I have to put quip and then I run that and then it's cut a little bit off the top I think and then it made it it grew it because I've trimmed off the top but it stretched it to fill the rest of it and so maybe now I dialed the height down to about half an inch let's see okay too small uh, 0.6 let's try it okay it's better now I've got to push it left a little bit more Okay, and a little bit more. Okay, so that's that's decent, I suppose. Um, the next thing to do is add some text labels. Let's do that. So we're going to add some more nodes. I'll put one right below uh, node B. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call it label B. I could call it something else. That's okay. But I'm going to put it at the position of image B. See how that goes? Uh, and I'm going to specify a new option, anchor. So this sets an anchor point at the north, so it'll be just above the... Uh, the anchor point is just above the image, so the image will hang below the anchor point. And let's see how that goes. Actually, it's not an image. We don't want to have an image, so let's, we're going to change it to text, and this will be uh, state 0 is what it, we want it to say. And so there it is, state zero. And I want to push it down a little bit more. Uh, so I'm actually going to take the coordinates of B. I'm going to paste them in, and then I'll lower them. There's probably a way to use relative coordinates, but I don't know how to do that just yet. So lowering this to 3.5, and we'll try that. Uh, that's a little more reasonable, I guess. And then similarly for the other image, let's put one in. State 1. And I'm going to take the coordinates from image A. Lower them by about a quarter, whatever that means. There's state 1. Okay, lower it some more. Okay, that's starting to look good. Now I'm going to add arrows to point to the different colors here. So I'll put in here a draw command. And we're going to uh, draw a line from label A. And we're going to go to another coordinate, let's say negative 3 and 2. Let's just try that, see what happens. So semicolon, and then if I look at this, I, I'm, this, I just drew this line. I'm going to make some improvements to it. Uh, first off, I'm going to make it thick. Well, I think the default is thick, so I'm going to make it very thick. And then I'm going to add an arrow. So instead, the line style will be like this, minus, greater than, and that makes it look like a little arrow, and you'll see that adds an arrow head to it. And so if I compile it, it's thicker and it has an arrow. And so now we want it to point from state one to that green line. And instead of specifying the point negative three, negative two, which is this point, so we're basically saying draw from label A to that point, um, I'm going to use relative coordinates because I can do that for draw. I know how to do that. So for relative coordinates, I do plus plus right before the next coordinate. And watch what happens. Uh, it's three, two relative, it's negative three and positive two relative to that. So I actually want maybe a, a positive two or maybe a, a positive one and a negative 1.5. So we'll do this and then check that and see how that goes. Okay, it's closer. So maybe one and a quarter, see how that goes. Uh, I need to make bigger steps than that. So 1.75. Oh, 
Okay. And one thing I would like to do here, I would like to use that green color. And off the top of my head, I don't know what that is. So to figure out what color this is, we're gonna use Microsoft PowerPoint. Okay, here's a PowerPoint and a new slide, I guess. And click here. And now I'm gonna add a shape. Double click it so that, or maybe right click it. Format shape. And then uh, fill. And I'm gonna go here to color, choose the color, more colors. And then I'm gonna take the color dropper and I'm gonna tab over to, oh, I don't know, play tech, and I'm gonna put my cursor here in quick, and then look back at Word, or PowerPoint, and it tells me that um, the color is 59, 114, and 56. So now that I know what the RGB triple is, I can just put that into the color definition for ticks. So let's go back here. For my arrow, I'm going to put in here draw, which specifies the draw color. So draw. And then I put in here RGB for red, green, blue. We'll put in here red. How much? Uh, let's double check. 59, 114, and 56. And then we have to put in here red, green, blue and then notice I'm putting in semicolons here to separate them let's see how that goes and now this green arrow matches the data color we're gonna do the same thing for state 0 so let's get its color putting the cursor over here going back to word and it's 135 64 66 okay we're going to copy and paste here. 135, 64, 66. And then we'll copy and paste also. But this time we'll go from label B. And let's go maybe uh, zero down. Uh, sorry, zero across. And then maybe down one and see how that goes just line it up to make things clean and run it there's my red so i'm going to make it go left a little bit so a quarter and then like this oh, whoops negative okay so now i've updated my plot and so what i've done here is i have images and instead of the user having to interpret what these data mean, I actually have a meaningful picture that says, okay, that's this line, and then this picture is that line. And so it reduces the probability that the reader will get confused about what the data is. While the previous plot was good, this plot is great. I've used ticks. Once you get used to ticks, you can make some really nice graphics. I'm going to show you a few other graphics that I made using ticks. So here's a document that I prepared, and I used ticks to make this picture. I put in a, another picture that someone gave me, and then I made these illustrations and put in the color disks there, and put in the labels and all the annotations. That's one picture. Uh, let's see. This is another set of pictures. I combined pictures that I made and then I put in these arrows and curves and then annotations. Here's another one. There are no external pictures added. This is all done in ticks. So is this one. And these are just some of the examples that you can make. I hope that was helpful. I know ticks can be challenging to learn, but if you apply the things that I showed you here, you'll have a good start in making ticks graphics.